So if you've ever tried to get your geometry to turn a corner in Blender, you might have run into issues where things get deformed or other things like that. In this video, we're going to check out a tool in Blender specifically designed to help us turn those corners with our complex shapes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's say, for example, that we took this surface right here, which is a simple plane, and we were to tap into edit mode and we were to extrude it like this. Well, then let's say that we wanted this to turn a corner and turn this way. So if we go in here and we rotate this by negative 45 degrees and then try to extrude it, notice how we're running into an issue where this is kind of bending inward around our corner, right? That's problematic because it makes it so that we're getting distortion in our object. It's not really a smooth turn around the corner. However, if we use a tool called the shear tool, then we can turn the corner no problem. So first thing you want to do is you want to tab into edit mode, you want to select this object and you want to extrude it just like we did the other object over here. Next, what we want to do is we want to activate the shear tool. So you can find that down below. You can also do a shift control alt S in order to activate the tool. So notice how if I do that, it starts moving the tool around. I actually prefer clicking on this because what it does is it gives me this really helpful visual um, of the shear tool. So. Um, a lot of the time when I'm trying to turn a corner, I'll go into a straight down view. So for example, I'm going to go into the Z axis view right here. Well, notice how if you take these handles and you drag on them, this is going to shear or move our object in different directions, right? So if I go into this view right here and shear it this way, notice how I can shear it forward. I can shear it sideways or up and down. Basically what it's doing is it's maintaining the axis location of an object and then moving the up and down um, along that axis. So it's basically creating a shear movement. So if we go to top down view right here, what we wanna do is we wanna click and drag this handle right here. Well, notice what that's doing is that is taking the elements of the object and it's moving them forward here and backward here, but it's maintaining the width right here. And usually what I end up doing is I usually end up using this little menu right here and I just end up typing a value of negative one. So best as I can tell, negative one really kind of corresponds with 45 degrees in your object. Well, once I do this, I can tap the E key to extrude again, and then I can tap the X button in order to extrude along this axis like this. So I can use this to extrude along axes in my model really easily. The other thing we can do is we can also unshear this. So if I was to rotate, right, just so you can see what I'm doing, I could take this and I could shear it back in this direction right here. And usually what I would do is I would just move this offset to a value of one like this. Well, the other cool thing we can do is we can also shear it in other directions. So now, whoops, let's go ahead and let's shear it this direction, not the direction I was dragging on that. But we're going to shear this to a value of one. And then we can extrude this up like this. So if I extrude it along the Z axis, notice how I can extrude this straight up and down like this. And so what we can do is we can use that in order to shear our object in different directions. And so one of the cool things about this is not only does it work on simple shapes like this cube, but it also works on other shapes. Like for example, this circle. So if I was to extrude this circle from edit mode, so I was to do an E to extrude, I'm gonna go to my straight on view and I'm gonna shear it. Um, we actually wanna shear it with this one right here. Notice how I can also shear this so that I can do things like making pipes go around corners and other things like that as well. And so one of the more practical applications of this is for architectural modeling. So let's say for example, that we have a base profile like this one. So assume that you were creating some kind of like a wood base or a wood trim. Let's say that I was to take this whole thing and extrude it like this. And then what I want is I want for it to go around an outside corner, right? Well, right now, if we try to rotate this, we're going to run into that same problem where we get that distortion, which is not what we want. Instead, we're just going to use the shear tool and we're just going to shear it in this direction right here. So I can shear it to a value of negative one, and then I can extrude it like this. Then I can shear it back. Whoops. That's the wrong one. There we go. I can shear it back just like this. So what that allows us to do is that allows us to take complex profiles like this piece of base and make it turn a corner. And then we can also use it for even more complex profiles. So for example, say that you had like a window mullion right here from a storefront window system. So this is basically the aluminum extrusion that you're going to use in order to create your window. Well, what we want is we want to take this whole thing 
and we want to extrude it so that it turns a corner. So I want to extrude it in this direction, like this. But at some point, what it needs to do is it needs to turn that 45 degrees, like this, so that I can extrude it upward. So E to extrude, and then Z in order to extrude it along this axis. And then when you're done, whoops, you can shear it back like this. And so you can see what that does is that takes this complex profile and it allows it to turn corners. So what you could do with this is you could, so you could generate some really complex window framing using profiles and the shear tool. All right, so if you're interested in more complex modeling methods, I'm also gonna link to a video on this page about how you can create complex profiles that follow along paths. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.